Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about something very, 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 very important, and that is knowing which version of iOS you need to support for your app. Now, I always get confused about this, and I always get lost in App Store Connect, so I'm going to be showing you how to support all the various versions of iOS, which version you should be supporting, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to jump in on my screen. So you jump into App Store Connect, and you go into App Analytics, and then you select your application. Boom, my application has now been selected. And this is the screen you want to see. And the first thing you need to see is something called opt-in only. Now, if you click on that, it tells you that in the last day, 36% of users have opted in to providing metrics. So we don't know 100% what iOS versions our users are using. However, we know that 36% of our users are giving us that information. So just knowing that information is kind of helpful because you know about a third is the correct piece of information. Yo, stop. One more thing, you guys are probably thinking, yo Ash, why are you not using Firebase or all these kind of analytics providers that give you all the analytics you want from your users, all the crash reports, instant, all that kind of stuff. And the reason is, just like you don't like being spied on and having your data sold to Google, Facebook, all that kind of stuff behind your back, I don't like that too. And I'm not gonna abuse my users by installing those third party analytics providers. You can do that, it will give you lots of insights. You can definitely get a lot of information. You can even find out where your users are tapping on the screen. You can do all this kind of nonsense recording for your apps. I just don't feel comfortable doing it. That's why I only use the analytics that's provided to me by default, which the users have consented to in their iOS settings. All right, so just before you integrate all of these kind of cool stuff, a spyware, that's what I call it, I mean, how many different analytics providers did we use? Every single, I guess everyone uses them. Everyone uses them. But I'm not going to use them. And maybe you shouldn't too. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Tell me what your favorite analytics provider is. And just, I'll find you a report telling you how much data they sell, how much of your users' data they sell to all these third parties. It's not good. Don't do it. You then jump into metrics. And then instead of filtering by date, you want to filter by platform version. And just like that, you can see on your screen all the various versions of iOS that people are viewing your app in. So this is product page views and you can go ahead and see the impressions, you can see the app units, and most importantly, you can look into sales because you want to see the big users actually paying you which version of iOS they're using. What's the point of releasing a new feature for an iOS version that your paying users aren't using? So over here, I can see that pretty much yeah, they're still using iOS 12. My app here is targeting iOS 12. And unfortunately, I can't switch over to iOS 13 yet because I still have paying users using iOS 12. Now there is a way to target both iOS 13, 14, 12 at the same time in code. So inside Xcode over here, you just put an if hash available iOS 10 and above or 11 and above, 12 and above, the specific version of iOS that you need Otherwise, you can make the code run in two different methods. So you can split up your code. You can say if there's iOS 11, 12, 13, do this and that. I recommend avoiding this as much as possible. If you need to do it like I have, do it. But you don't want to end up like Facebook or Google where you have those insanely unresponsive, bizarre experiences. Seriously, Google Maps is always going crazy on me. I don't even use the Facebook app because it's so horrendously awful. And YouTube, oh my God, that application is just mental. YouTube Studio, it's just a mental application. So just try to be at least better than the billion plus trillion dollar companies applications out there in the world. And hopefully you can make a great experience for your users. So that's just a little demonstration on how to know which version of iOS you should be targeting. For me, I'm gonna still target iOS 12, even though there's some amazing features in iOS 13 and 14 that I'd love to just transition to. For example, in iOS 13, you can have a font book selectors. No longer do you have to design your own UI to pick out a select, to pick out a font. You can actually use the built-in iOS version for that. And that is uh, amazing. I wish I could switch to it. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll tell my iOS 12 users like, enough's enough, time to upgrade or maybe I'll just hold out for another six months and hopefully by then things will have improved. Let me know in the comment section below which version of iOS you guys are developing your apps for and hope you found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Now it's time to do some swift development on my Mac mini. Look, it's just right there looking pretty. Not doing much with it. Still rocking my 16 incher.